Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. For today's sermon, we're going to take a look at the Gospel reading from John, and in particular, we're going to look at verses 14 and 15. They read, And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. Now those are the words that Jesus spoke to Nicodemus. And Nicodemus was a man who was greatly concerned with the things of God. He was very concerned with eternal life. The problem is that he couldn't quite comprehend the way he had to receive that. Now Nicodemus was a Pharisee. And as you know, most of the Pharisees were very, had a lot of animosity toward Jesus. But Nicodemus was different because he had seen the signs and the miracles that Jesus had performed and Nicodemus knew that this was truly a prophet sent from God. And he even called him rabbi, which is a title of respect. So with this in mind, he took a very risky trip to visit Jesus one-on-one -on -one at night. Now all this is pretty impressive coming from Nicodemus because John tells us he was a ruler of the Jews. He was probably a member of the Sanhedrin. It was 70 very elite rulers that looked over Israel. And Nicodemus was a highly educated person. He was very well known. He had high standing in society. So it's pretty flattering that Nicodemus risked having this personal meeting with Jesus at night, that he complimented him and called him rabbi. But Jesus knew what was in his heart. And despite his outward show of piety and his good intentions, Nicodemus was ignorant when it came to spiritual things. Now, by human standards, he led an amazing life. And he had the right ancestors. He knew the right people. But that's not how you gain favor from the Lord God, the creator of all things. I mean, being a good person does not earn you God's grace. And knowing the right people or having the right heritage, well, that doesn't impress God either. When it comes to the kingdom of God, all claims of merit amount to nothing. Salvation comes only by God-given faith. As Jesus declares, truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And again, he says, truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Now, despite all his education and his religious training, Nicodemus was baffled by this. I mean, he couldn't comprehend how one could be born again, as you see in the conversation that follows. And that statement about needing to be born of water and the Spirit just didn't make any sense. So Nicodemus asked him, Jesus, how can these things be? And Jesus responds to this question by pointing Nicodemus to two events. One took place a very long time ago in the history of Israel, and the other event was yet to come. Jesus said, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. Now, as an expert in Scripture, Nicodemus knew all about the serpent in the wilderness. I mean, that was a very important event in the history of Israel. It was recorded in the book of Numbers by Moses. See, while they were wandering through the desert, after they had been uh, gotten out of slavery in Egypt, the Israelites began to complain and grumble against God. They were upset with the food that God was providing for them. They complained against not only God, but Moses. And they said, Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we loathe this worthless food. Now, of course, God did supply them with water. He did it miraculously out of a rock. It was plenty for everyone to drink. God protected them and guided them. Their clothes didn't even wear out on their journey. And he provided food for them. He provided special food from heaven called manna, and it kept them healthy and strong. 
but they despised the food that the Lord had lovingly provided for them. They just got sick of it and started complaining. So God sent poisonous snakes among them, a lot of them. And they bit the people, and many became sick, and they died. And with all the death and suffering going on around them, they repented from their wicked ways. And they turned to Moses and they begged him to intercede for them, that he would pray to God and stop this thing from happening. So Moses prayed to God. And the Lord told him to fashion a serpent out of bronze and to put it up on a pole. And that whoever went and looked up at that serpent, trusting in his promises, would be healed completely. And so it was. Those who went in faith and looked up at the bronze serpent on the pole were saved from death. Now, as Jesus pointed Nicodemus to this event that happened long, long ago, he also pointed him to a, an event that was yet to come. See, the serpent that was lifted up in the wilderness brought physical life to whoever looked upon it and believed. And so, too, the Son of Man was going to be lifted up, and whoever looked upon him with faith and believed would receive spiritual life. Now, today's reading leaves us with a bit of a cliffhanger, because John doesn't say anything else about Nicodemus for now. He just went back off into the night. We don't know what he was thinking, but we're left to contemplate that. And you know Nicodemus' security and his heritage and his good deeds were certainly shaken. You can picture him pondering those words that Jesus had spoken to him over and over again. I'm sure he was up at night thinking about what that meant. Now Nicodemus appears once again in chapter 7 of John. And in that event, he pleads with the Pharisees to give Jesus a fair trial. He wants them to be fair before they execute judgment upon him. Now we still don't know what's going on with Nicodemus, but he appears to know there's something special about Jesus, that he doesn't deserve to be treated like a criminal. And he grows bolder. He says this in front of the rest of his group. Now the last time that Nicodemus appears in John is in chapter 19. And this time, this final time, he's standing at the cross. And he's standing there with Joseph of Arimathea. He's there to honor Jesus with a proper burial. Now this is the man that he went to at night. This is the man he said was a true prophet from God, the man he called Rabbi. And now he stood at the cross, <coughs> looking up at Jesus and his mangled body, now dead, with the blood covering him, drying. As Nicodemus stood there looking up at Jesus on that cross. That conversation must have been coming back through his mind that they had a while back. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up that whoever believes in him shall have eternal life. Now Nicodemus was no longer worried about being seen with Jesus. In fact, Scripture tells us that he took the body down and wrapped it to prepare it for burial. And he brought an enormous amount of aloe and myrrh, 75 pounds to prepare the body. And that is an amount fit for a king. Now John doesn't tell us what Nicodemus is thinking, but he wants us to be in his shoes. And we can see that the actions Nicodemus had speak a lot. Now on this second Sunday in Lent, we find ourselves standing at the cross with Nicodemus. We gaze upon the wonder of the cross through eyewitness testimony recorded in Scripture. And that image of Jesus lifted up on that cross and bleeding and dying, it's a wake-up call for every single one of us because it reminds us that God takes sin very seriously. He punishes sin. And we're reminded that the wages of sin is death. We are dust, and to dust we shall return. But that cross is a source of tremendous joy because we realize on that cross God's tremendous love for us. I mean, he withheld nothing from us. He would go to any length to save us. 
including sending his only begotten son, Jesus. Because the Son of Man did indeed need to be lifted up on that cross. That's why Jesus came as a real flesh and blood human being. I mean, Jesus came and was born in Bethlehem so that eventually he could die. He came to die on the cross so that whoever looks upon him with faith shall not perish, but have eternal life. This belief isn't a matter of head knowledge. It isn't just a pull up, pull up your uh, boots and get ready for work. It's not a matter of willpower. It's a belief that comes only to those who have been born again, as Jesus said. And quite literally, that's translated born from above. It's a childlike trust. And it's given to all who have been born of water and the Spirit. Now, God shows no favoritism. He's not impressed by heritage or social standing or wealth or education. Salvation is a free gift. And it's available to all people who look upon Christ and believe. Now, you have been born of water and the Spirit. You have, I believe, all been born through holy baptism from above by the Lord God and been given the gift of the Holy Spirit. So listen one more time to what the Lord had to say today. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that all who believe in Him shall have eternal life. See, Jesus was lifted up on the cross for your sins. You are forgiven. So believe in Jesus, because eternal life is yours in His holy name. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.